But it says this, where can we find an answer? Where can we find a hope? Seems everyone that you meet walk in the street, trying their best just to cope. Is this all there is to living? Fighting the daily grind? You wonder, where is the love? Where is the joy? Isn't there more to this life? God will you show. Take it from me. He wants you to know. You can have life abundantly. God gives it to you. Take it from me. Once you have found the answer, you've got to spread the word. So many people today losing their way because they've just never heard. Now that you know the good news, you just can't keep it in. Somebody told you of him, go tell a friend. Freely you've got, freely give. Take it from me, God loves you so. Take it from me, he wants you to know. You can have life abundantly. God gives it to you. Take it from me. The theme obviously has been talking about being a carrier of the light. Someone who has a story to tell. And that all centers in the Word of God. The Word in us. Before I preach, I want to share a song that I wrote just a couple of years ago that talks about the power of being in that Word, in your Word.
look to the Word today, I want to thank especially Pastor Josh and Pastor Mike for doing what they have done uh, with out someone who is integral to what we do every Sunday. Uh, that is Robert Muir. Robert is, um, has been absent for a couple of weeks, visiting with family and then sick, and um, he has been diagnosed with COVID and is quarantining. Um, but uh, we want to pray for Robert right now. Would you join me, Father, in the name of Jesus? Thank you for the gifts that Robert has and the talents and his heart of service. We are blessed, Lord, to have so many people that are willing to serve. Thank you for David, the way he always steps up and serves. But Lord, beyond gifts and talents and ability, we love Robert. He is a child of God. He is our brother. He is a father. And we ask in the name of Jesus that your healing hand would be upon him and completely restore him and help him, Lord, to be well. To be well. And let him know right now that his church loves him and is praying for him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want you to turn with me your Bible to the book of Acts this morning, chapter 4. My wife wanted me to remind you not only about the app that you can use to look at the outline of the message and also the prayer request and um, announcements, uh, but if you go to our church Facebook page, if you don't have that app, all you have to do is go to that first announcement about today's message. There's a little picture of the Bible there and the U version app. Just push that and it will take you. Uh, it will be a link to take you to that app. Even if you don't have that, you can still use that to see what we're talking about today. Acts chapter 4. Let me set the stage very quickly. And, and this is a message that is quite different for me. Even in the preparation of it, it's been quite different because what I want to do today is encourage you and exhort you. How many of you were encouraged yesterday to see thousands of people gathering in Washington, D.C. and praying for our nation? Oh, wow, that was so... And to see people calling upon the Lord when so often we see people gathered in what is termed as protest and there is anger and there is violence and there is hatred and yet we saw love and we saw faith. That was encouraging. In times like these, not only do we need prayer for our nation, not only do we need what happened yesterday, we need to encourage one another from the Word of God and exhort one another. And that's what I want to do this morning. Let me just set the stage for what's happening here in Acts 4. The day of Pentecost was a special day. In fact, the Bible opens in Acts 2 with those words, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. But then, the atmosphere changes completely in Acts chapter 3. It says, now Peter and John were going to the temple to pray at the hour of prayer, which was 3 o'clock. Jewish day begins at 6, it was the ninth hour, it was 3 o'clock. They were Christians, they were followers, disciples, apostles, but they were also Jews. And so there they were at the hour of prayer. And as they were on their way, the Bible says that a lame man, a beggar, that was brought regularly to the temple gate to have location. So when people were on their way in and out of the temple, they could not go there without seeing and hearing from him. Alms for the poor, alms for the poor. This was a man, the Bible says, that was crippled from birth. He saw Peter and John and he asked them for alms. Now we have Pentecost days, but we also have those ordinary days when we're just doing what we do. 
And yet in those days, opportunities for ministry come. Peter said, we don't have money to give you. We don't have silver and gold. And I'm sure the man's countenance shows that's not what he wanted to hear. But he says, what I do have, what I do possess, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. And Peter reached down with his right hand and lifted him up. Not only did he stand, he walked, he leaped. And they went to the temple together and the people were astonished because this was not someone who traveled with Peter to fake a miracle. This was someone that they saw daily. They knew his story. They knew his situation. And they were astonished because he was healed. And so in the midst of this, Peter took advantage of the opportunity and said, why are you looking at us as if by our own power we've done this? And what did he do? He preached Jesus. In fact, he preached the Jesus that he said, you delivered to be crucified, but God raised him from the dead. Now, listening and watching on the sideline, as always, were those people who were looking to catch Christians doing something Christian. And this really was when persecution began against the church. And what happened was the Sadducees kind of sat back and watched. They were the ones this time, not the Pharisees, but the Sadducees who spearheaded this. Why? Because the Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection of the dead. And what were they saying? This Jesus whom God has raised from the dead, by His name, this man is healed. They didn't like that. And so they saw to it that Peter and John were arrested. And the next day, along with the leaders of the temple and the, and the Jewish high priest and his family and other leaders, they gathered to hear what had happened. And basically for Peter and John to present their case. And they asked them, you know, why are you doing this? And by what authority are you doing this? And Jesus told them, Sadducees and all, regardless of what you believe about the resurrection, Jesus whom you crucified, God raised him from the dead. By his name, this man is healed. And, and they even close with this, and there is no other name by which we can be saved. So what did they do? They sent the men out. And we're going to pick up this story a little bit. I, I think I preached a little bit into the story, but Acts chapter 4, verse 13. <coughs> The word of the Lord reads, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated, common men, they were astonished. And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. I love that. These guys didn't arrive at this point on their own. They've been with Jesus. But seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. There was the proof. But when they had commanded them to leave the council, they conferred with one another, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that a notable sign has been performed through them is evident to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But in order that it may spread no further among the people. Let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But, <laughs> but Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. I love verse 20. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. I love to tell the story. This little light of mine, it's burning. We cannot help but speak of what we have seen and heard. And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all were praising God for what had happened. For the man on whom this sign of healing was performed was more than 40 years old. Wow. Let me read verse 20 again. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. I come from a family of preachers. In fact, my dad was a preacher. 
and his dad was a preacher and my mom her father Mylon Boyd was a preacher and uh, she had three brothers who were all preachers my dad had three sisters and one of them married a preacher and uh, my sister Kathy married a preacher and my uh, sister Connie and her husband are in ministry my brother's a preacher but you know what my dad told us and he didn't claim to be the creator of this saying it wasn't original with him but it was a good warning he said if you can do anything else but preach do it and he would always add because if you can you're not called if the call of God is upon your heart to share in that type of ministry you will be miserable doing anything else what about the call of God on Christians? What about the going that is incumbent upon all of us? What do we call that? I want to look at just five images, word pictures very quickly from Scripture that describe that God force that is within us that will not be quieted. It's called a seed in Luke chapter 8 and verse 11. You know the parable of the sower and how it basically talks about the seed and the soil. And it talks about how that some hear the word and have this reaction and others hear the word and it falls on this kind of soil and there's this reaction. And on and on it goes. But basically what it's telling us is how people respond to the seed of God's word being planted in the soil of their soul. And verse 11 says, clearing up any confusion, the Word of God is the seed. The Word of God is the seed, or the seed is the Word of God. So it is a seed that is in us, and we know from Genesis that the seed has life in it. The power to reproduce inside of it. A second image we see in Scripture is this. It's not just a seed, it is a debt. Now when you say that, you say, oh, I don't like debt. It's not a financial debt. It's not one that's going to hurt your credit score. It's this kind of debt. Paul said in Romans chapter 1, in verse 14, he said, I am a debtor to the Greeks. I'm a debtor to the barbarians. I'm a debtor to the wise. I'm a debtor to the unwise. And then he even talked to the people he was writing to at Rome and said, that's why I want more than anything to preach the gospel to you. I'm a debtor to you. And then he said in verse 16, and you know it, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation to all who believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. What he was saying was, somebody told me and I have to tell you, I was lost, but now I'm found, and I must do all I can to help those who are lost. Years ago, I wrote a song with those words, and I don't know that I'll remember all the words. I've written them down here, and I'll try to lean on them a little bit. But it says this, where can we find an answer? Where can we find a hope? Seems everyone that you meet walk in the street, trying their best just to cope. Is this all there is to living? Fighting the daily grind? You wonder, where is the love? Where is the joy? Isn't there more to this life? Take it from me. God will you show. Take it from me. He wants you to know. You can have life abundantly. God gives it to you. Take it from me. Once you have found the answer, you've got to spread the word. So many people today losing their way because they've just never heard. Now that you know the good news, you just can't keep it in. Somebody told you of him, go tell a friend. Freely you've got, freely give. Take it from me, God loves you so. Take it from me, he wants you to know. You can have life abundantly. God gives it to you. Take it from me. The bridge says, from God to me, from me to you, from you to another, that's what we must do. Tell someone what God's Word says. Tell another beggar where they can find bread. That's what it means. We have been given a debt. Someone told us and we have to tell others. It is a seed. It is a debt. 
Thirdly, it is a message. I want to just read 1 Thessalonians 2.13 from the International Children's Bible because it puts it in very clear language. Listen to this. Paul writing to the Christians at Thessalonica, he says, Also, we always thank God because of the way you accepted His message. His message. You heard His message from us. And you accepted it as the Word of God, not the words of men. And it really is God's message. And that message works in you who believe. It is a seed, it is a debt, it is a message. Some of you, like me, are saved because you heard the message and you could not get away from it. Maybe it was a preacher that preached it or maybe it was a friend at work who told it to you. And that message stayed with you. And you realize this truth, this message, this story that we saw presented in this film, I have to act upon it. And then when we do act upon it, we have to tell others about it. I want to give you another image. It's a fire. Pastor Mike lit a candle today. It's a fire. Jeremiah was preaching to people. Now I want you to picture this in a contemporary setting or context. He was saying, judgment is coming. God is going to pour out judgment, the kind that we deserve, and you know it. People did not want to hear that. He was unpopular, to say the least. In fact, the other preachers and speakers for religion were countering his message by saying just the opposite. These are times of blessing and prosperity, God's goodness. You don't have to listen to that man. He's out of his mind. And so Jeremiah, who said, we're going to be going into captivity. We're going to be overtaken. But it's God's judgment for our good. Jeremiah said, if I wanted to stop preaching this, if I wanted to stop talking in the name of God, Yahweh, he said, if I tried to conceal it, if I tried not to talk about it, he said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. That's Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, it's, or 20, 20, 20 and 9, he said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. Have you ever felt that way that you've got to tell somebody what God has done for you? You're going to bust. You're so excited. It's fire. Shut up in your bones. I want to tell you, I felt that. I've got to tell somebody. I'm so glad I was a young person when I was. <coughs> because Andre Crouch was writing songs. And there's a song of his that went, I'm going to keep on singing. I'm going to keep on shouting. I'm going to keep on lifting my voice and let the world know Jesus says. Anybody remember that? Some of you do. It went like this. I'm going to keep on singing. I'm going to keep on shouting. Help me out. I'm going to keep on lifting my voice and let the world know Jesus say. The chorus went like this. So many lonely people all over the world. The blessed words of Jesus they have never heard. If I don't go, if you don't go, if we don't go, how will they know I can keep to myself? I gotta tell somebody else. I'm going to keep on lifting my voice and let the world know Jesus saves. Have you ever felt that way? He goes on to say, I'm going to keep on marching. I'm going to keep on fighting. You trumpets keep on sounding. You bells keep on ringing. And everybody keep lifting your voice and let the world know Jesus saves. It's a fire inside of us. We have no choice if it's really there, but to share it but to keep telling others about it. Let me give you one more example. It is a voice. It's a seed. It is a debt. It is a message. It is a fire. It is a voice. John chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. 
Have you ever heard that voice inside? Felt that fire within? Been keenly aware of the debt you owe? Felt the life-giving seed of the gospel just growing inside of you? Felt that message echoing in your heart? Have you ever? I hope you have. I hope you do right now. Let me tell you what happened to me this week. On Monday, really on Sunday, but on Monday I have to get serious about preaching next Sunday. Now I know I've got midweek oasis and I've got other things to do, but I've still got to think about Sunday morning message. And sometimes I'm doing a series, a series and so I'm already kind of in it and my homework is done. Or maybe I've been preparing for a message, ordered some books or talked to some people, prayed about it, wrote some stuff to get prepared for it. Or sometimes I just have to say, Lord, you know, where, where do I feel you're leading me right now to share? And you don't happen to be Monday. Some of you, this will sound absolutely strange. I told it to my wife. I said, does that ever happen to you? And she said, no. No. I thought, okay, thank you. That was helpful. A poem started going in my head. You ever had a song that isn't start playing in your head? You know you've got to start jotting some stuff down, marking some stuff out, and writing options. And you got to go back the next day and see if it still sounds good. You're at a point going through your head and you just cannot help but think in terms of that. You try to get away from it. I felt that poem start, that voice within. So that's what it is. And I thought, I don't have time for this. I'm, I'm in the middle, getting close to the end of a, of a semester at Lee with students. I've got to record videos for our church, for school. I've got to work on messages. I don't have time for this. And did you know it didn't care? That voice just kept right on talking. I said, Pastor, you hear voices? Yeah, I guess I do. And as I begin to work on that point, I begin to see that maybe... It was a reminder that there's another voice inside me that will not be still. There's another message that won't allow me to put other things before it, that demands my time and attention, that calls out, you have to share this. I want to share this poem with you, and I'm going to try to read it slowly because I think it's more effective that way to, to hear the point and the parallel that I'm trying to create. It's called A Voice Within. Talked about that seed that is within us, that life-giving seed. We talked about the message, the debt. We talked about the fire, but it's also a voice that is within us. And for me this week, that message came through loud and clear as I heard a voice. I wrote these words, and again, it's called A Voice Within. Sometimes a poem begins to form, but I won't let it grow. I don't have time to think in rhyme, so I respond with no. My inner muse just hates to lose, so it fills up my thoughts with could'ves and with should'ves and the ever-present alts. That's when I get this rhyme regret infusing my whole brain. The guilt will cry, don't let it die, a save the poem campaign. And so I shelve whatever else I plan to do that day and think in terms of rhyme and verse and what I need to say. See, poetry, at least for me, is like an inner voice. I must assist. It feels as if I haven't got a choice. Insistent and persistent, that describes the cry within. It won't calm down until the sounds of poetry begin. The syllables are fillable with words I want to use. A sonnet if I want it, or whatever style I choose. 
It's like the form is nothing more than where the message stays. Each word a block that interlocks to keep the idea safe. And then I smell a parallel, a biblical connect. I sense my heart and spirit are about to intersect. Aesthetic and prophetic come together in my mind. A poem and a psalm in chapter 23, verse 5. The message of this passage, I'm sure everybody knows. The shepherd, he's been good to me. My cup just overflows. And Jeremiah spoke of fire shut up in his bones. The prophet couldn't stop it. And he's surely not alone. Because Paul, well, he said, woe is me if I don't preach the word. I'm obligated to relay the message I have heard. As Christians, we, that's you and me, are jars of clay at best. But what's inside the truth of Christ means we are treasure chest. Yet we behave like Jesus made us keepers of the vault, who can't allow the common crowd to learn the truth he taught. I think we should. It would do us good to take a scripture break. Let's briefly pause while we recall God's word, for goodness sake. Now Peter said, when he was led before the Jews, Acts 4, Should we obey the things you say or listen to the Lord? Well, as for me, and John agrees, this is our final word. We cannot help. We have to tell what we have seen and heard. I mentioned 1 Corinthians in 9.16 we read, I am compelled, I've got to tell what Christ has done for me. If you want more, Acts 8 and 4 describes what happened when. The devil tried to meddle in the Holy Spirit's plan. When persecution drove the church from where the fire fell, the Christians went like they were sent and had good news to tell. Now let me ask, when was the last time you heard from the Lord? Did you respond or put him on some list you just ignore? If poetry is like a seed with life and growth within, a vital force we can't ignore, then catch a clue, my friend. The gospel is impossible to bury in your soul. It's living and life-giving, ever new and ever old. The scriptures, just like pictures, show great things that happen when we pay attention, really listen to God's voice within. Would you bow your heads with me? Father God, thank you for that voice within this week, even if it was one that I didn't want to hear from because I thought it was interfering with what I had to say, not realizing that it was what I needed to say. Thank you, Lord, that everyone here who is truly born again by the blood of Jesus Christ, born of the Spirit, born from above, has a seed planted in them, a life-giving seed, and it will grow. And they won't be able to hide it or contain it. And they won't want to. Every born-again believer here, Lord, has a debt to pay. They can't say, I don't owe anybody anything. They do. They owe every man and woman and child that needs to hear it, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that we would understand as Christians, we have a message that somebody told us, and it's a message that's not the word of man, but the word of God, and we have to share it. Father, let the people here today, the people of College Park, this church family, feel what Jeremiah felt when he said, it's like a fire in my bones. And I have to share it. I have to tell it. Father, I pray that we will ask ourselves, when was the last time I heard God's voice in my heart? 
when was the last time I wanted to hear it? When was the last time I missed it? When was the last time I prayed for it, oh God? Speak so that I may share. Father, help us to be satisfied with nothing less than a burning fire in our soul that says, we ought to tell. We got to tell. A burning fire that says, I'm going to keep on singing. I'm going to keep on shouting. I'm going to keep on lifting my voice and let the world know Jesus saves. Father, I pray that we would shake off the rags of religion and be infused with the reality that we are carriers of the light. And we would begin to share that light with others. Not just because we want to, but because we have to. If we can do anything else, we would, but we can't. Because that call is burning in our soul. Burning in our soul. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. I want you right now to ask yourself, when was the last time I heard God's voice in my heart? When was the last time I felt so compelled to tell somebody that I could not not do it? When was the last time I felt what I would describe as a fire of the gospel burning in my bones? Would you right now just call upon the Lord to not just restore the joy of His salvation, but the urgency of the message. The joy of sharing the message of salvation. Let us weep before you until we sense that fire burning in our soul that we are carriers of the light. That we cannot help but tell because of the debt that we owe and the seed that is growing in our soul. I pray this week people will be told about Jesus because of what's happened here. That people will be breathed upon by the Holy Spirit because of what's happening here. That they would sense the, what your word calls the perfume of God's presence because it is on people who are here today who will not be satisfied with anything less. Father, we may be encouraged, and we should be, by thousands upon thousands upon thousands of believers praying for our nation and worshiping Yahweh, worshiping you. But let us not forget the power of one voice, our voice, in Jesus' name. Amen. Sing that chorus. I love to tell the story will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and His love. through the
the service today and everything that's been said and done. And I hope we can not leave here saying just it's been good to be in the house of the Lord, but also unsettled and unsatisfied this week with anything less than a fire burning in us and a contagious gospel that we are carriers of that we must share. Spiritually take off your mask and tell somebody about it. Thank you for being with us today. Join us again next Sunday and we look forward to Midweek Oasis. I'll be sharing with you a message this week uh, on Wednesday and I hope that you'll take time to watch that. Pastor Josh, tonight is it six and seven? Five and six. Five o'clock and six o'clock for our children, young people. Please take note and take advantage of all the creative ways we are trying to reach out to you and others. Would you stand with me? Again, thank you to all those who ministered today. I've been blessed by all that's been said and sung. It's been encouraging. As we are dismissed in prayer, let's continue to pray for those in our church family, but also pray that God's word would be the seed that stays with us this week and begins to grow, not in hard ground, or ground that's choked out by cares of life, but make sure your soil is fertile soil where the seed can grow in the gospel that you've heard today. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the story. Check us, Lord. Unsettle us, Lord. Help us to be miserable if we do anything other than share what we have heard. Because we are children of God and we are indebted and we have to tell others about a God who loves us and so loved the world that he gave his son. Now, Lord, together we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you.